Welcome back to the Crochet Credits. Well, it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to do the trick or treat little spider web that is on this. Now the pumpkins are actually already done in tutorial format but I'm gonna be concentrating here on the web itself. You should you be using cotton yarn, Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter yarn because this is displayed on the outside. Chances are you will put it on the outside of your door. You want cotton to be that yarn of choice and of course for longevity like really longevity cotton would be the best. You'll need a four millimeter size G crochet hook but today I'm gonna to be using a five millimeter size H so that you can follow exactly what we're gonna be doing. It's not a hard pattern and today I'm gonna to show you how to do that. So let's get our yarn ready and let's go. So let's begin. I'm gonna be using an autumn red uh, instead of using white on a white background which makes no sense. I'm gonna use red just so that you can see it better. We're gonna create a slip knot for the wreath. You'll need two of these but you can decorate a little these spider webs anywhere you want to and that's the whole point in today's tutorial. So once your um, slip knot is on I want you to chain a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and insert the hook into the beginning chain here and then yarning over and pulling it through. And then you have a large ring which is kind of the starting of your web. So let's begin round number one. We're actually gonna be doing a double treble but it doesn't say to do that but that's what it is. It's an old pattern so maybe this is something new. So you're gonna chain a total of eight to begin and this is gonna count as your first spoke and chain four space. So one, two, three, four. There's your first spoke and then five, six, seven and eight. Now it gives you all this fun instruction for making the next spoke but it's actually a double treble. So I want you to wrap the hook three times. So one, two and three. Insert right into the center of the ring and yarning over pulling it through and then you have five loops on the hook. So yarning over pulling it through two, yarn pull through two, yarning over pulling through two and then two and there is your next spoke. So how many spokes are there? That's the, the main question today. There will be a total of eight spokes around this. So in order to move to the next spoke you have to chain four. So one, two, three and four and then coming back and let's wrap for a double treble. So one, two and three into the center of the ring and then pulling it through. You got five loops back on your hook. Pull through two, two, two and two and then begin your next spoke again. So you gotta chain four to before. So one, two, three and four and then simply just double treble again into the center of the ring. So I want you to do that until you see eight of these spokes. I'll see you back here in just a moment. Once you can see that there's eight spokes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Before you finish you have to chain four. So one, two, three and four and I want you then to slip stitch to the fourth one up. So one, two, three and four and that's where we're gonna go. So slip stitch right in, pulling it through and through and there is round number one. So you see it looks great. So let's now move on to round number two. So we're now gonna begin round number two. So you're gonna chain a total of 12 to start this time. So the first four is the first spoke. So one, two, three and four. And now the next eight are the actual space because the web is getting bigger. So let's just keep on counting. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve. Now once you have that done all you're just gonna do is come to the top of the next spoke and double treble. So wrap three times and in and then just do it as you normally have done it before. So two is all the way back to the top and then to move to the next spoke you are going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and then double treble into the next spoke. So wrap three times and then into the into the spoke and then twos all the way back up. So I want you to do that all the way around then for round number two and you'll see it's getting much bigger from this point. Okay once you get your last spoke in you're going to chain eight and then you're going to join to the fourth one up. So one, two, three and four. Actually I think it's a little one higher. So there you go. Sorry I miscounted from the, the base. 
So that's why I said one higher. So you're just gonna slip stitch and now we've got one more round to do. It's actually bigger than I expected but I think it's because of the crochet hook too. So let's do your final round. Now we're going to chain a total of 16. So the first four is the first spoke. So one, two, three, four. There's your spoke and now the, the rest all the way to 16. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Once you have that done, then I want you to do that double treble into the next spoke. So wrapping three times into the spoke, pulling it through. You can see it's very lacy and very airy, which is fine. That's what a spider web's meant to do. And pull through and through. So then once you have that first one done, then it's another 12 to the next one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. And then come into the top of the first one, or sorry, the next spoke with the double treble. So wrapping three times and then in, and then just finish it off as you normally have. So please do that all the way around. So just make sure that there's 12 uh, chains in between the spokes and then you're good to go. So let me get that done. I'll see you back here in just a moment. So once you have all the spokes filled in, which I do, then there is that chaining of 12 and then you're gonna go to the fourth one up. So just one, two, three, and four and you're going to join it to the fourth one up and then pull through and through. Now you're gonna wanna use a darning needle. So if you want it to go bigger, this is where the pattern ends. So what have you figured out what the denominations are? We always knew these were double trebles, so that doesn't change. So the denomination is that you were adding in four extra stitches. So if last time we were chaining 12 in between, it'll be 16 the next time and then 20 and then 24 if you wanted to do that. So your first one here when you go to start, you have to add a four for there. So if the next one, here, if this was chaining 16 to start, then it's chaining 20 to start, and then it would be 24 to start, and etc. So hopefully that makes sense to you, just in case you wanna make it bigger for whatever you're doing. So to finish this off, you're just gonna trim your yarn, and I want you to grab a darning needle, the only way that things never truly fall out, is to use a, a tapestry needle to hide things in. So you're just gonna feed that onto the hook, or sorry, onto the needle, and then you're just gonna safely, I would go down into the spoke instead of going across uh, like you normally would and it probably would look better if it was hidden going in the down motion in this particular one because it's so spacey. So you're gonna go down for once, make sure that you don't cause it to buckle and then going up a slightly different path to, uh, to uh, go the second time up. Again, make sure it doesn't buckle on you and then finally a third time down. So a project can never be stretched three different directions at the same time. So three times is the charm. So coming down for the third time, give it a kind of a good tug, make sure that all the unusual stuff is gone. And this completes on how to do a spider web. And let me just back out the camera. So this is actually lar larger like in comparison to the size of my hands and it's a really neat idea and you can use this for a decor idea. If you would have changed the hook back to a four millimeter size G, it of course would have been smaller, but of course your creativity is subject to whatever you find makes you most happiest. Until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends over at Yarnsbrasons.com. We'll see you.